And I promised a fellow YouTuber that I would post a autopsy on my rocket heater. Uh, this is uh, revision B. <clears throat> my first build I used a uh, metal liner for the heat riser and that lasted about a week and a half or so before it uh, burned through. So my next idea was to use a uh, chimney clay liner uh, for the heat riser and uh, there are the remnants of that lying there. Here's my uh, insulation shroud. Uh, that seems to be holding up okay. There's the base. Uh, there's the hot water heater, the outside. Um, and for what it's worth, that's 18 inches in diameter. The heat shroud's 12 inches in diameter. And there's the combustion chamber. Now, if it was just uh, an issue with the uh, cracking of the the ceramic liner, I probably would have left it because the insulation held everything in place and it, other than some really ugly sounds uh, as it cracked, uh, the insulation stayed where it should and I didn't have a problem with it uh, leaking into the combustion chamber. Uh, and for what it's worth, um, there was more cracking after the fire went out than during the actual burn. And I think it's just thermal stress, uh, the cool air uh, going in uh, through the combustion chamber and up through the heat riser. It was just pure thermal shock. Now I looked, uh, a couple times I'd look inside about 10 or 15 minutes after uh, the fire went out. And that chimney, uh, that clay liner, was glowing uh, cherry red, and that and that's 15 minutes after the fire went out. So I have no accurate way of measuring what temperature was going on in there, but man, it's hot. Okay, so like I said, if it was just a, a matter of the the liner cracking, I would have left it. But here's my my heartburn, uh, and it's with the uh, the combustion chamber. Now this is. Uh, quarter inch uh, mild steel uh, square tubing and the, the and where the, uh, the the high heat areas I doubled it up and went so this is all half inch back here and you can see major flaking or, or scaling of the steel uh, so I, I know this is not going to stand the test of time this is only, uh, this isn't even a month old, uh, so, uh, and again there's the oil feed tube, and underneath here, if I flip it, you can see the start of heavy scaling of the seal. I mean, this is just, this is not good, and there's just no way this is going to stand up. Again, these areas back here are half inch, and I'm flaking steel away big time. So I guess I'm going to have to get some uh, I, uh, 304 stainless anyway, and uh, even on the bottom, on areas that are away from the heat, heavy scaling, heavy scaling going on. And this is areas away from the heat. Now I've, I've purchased a uh, four foot length of 316 stainless steel liner for the right heat riser and that's right here. So once I get the combustion chamber rebuilt I'll post another video and we'll try again, but I got to admit that uh, this is getting to be uh, arduous at best. I don't want to have to keep rebuilding this thing uh, every couple weeks. I mean, that's a rugged piece of machinery, and I'm just 
I'm just destroying it with the heat. So that's where I am at the moment, and I don't know if that'll help anybody else. Um, if you're building this anything like this out of mild steel, you might as well stop and rethink it because it just it can't take it. I would say stainless steel at a minimum, and but I mean that one piece of pipe right there was $150. So. It, Maybe I should have stayed with my old Ozert style waste oil burner. It wasn't pretty, but uh, I didn't have issues like this. So that's it for the moment. I hope you're having a better day than I. Take care.